Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to From the Depths Most Wanted. And as you've probably already guessed from the title and from the way the camera is having to track this bloody thing, today's topic of uh, disgust and interest is something that uh, gives quite a few people a bit of trouble depending on their playstyle. This is the Eerie. The one and only flying thing in the Onyx Watch faction. And of course there are going to be people in the comments saying like, Oh come on guys, uh, the Eerie's not that hard. I'd like to preemptively ask all those people to shut up, please. Because uh, if I do a Most Wanted on something, it is probably most definitely because at least one person has uh, found this thing difficult. Even if that one person is only me, and I know for a fact that uh, the Eerie annoys a lot of people. Basically anyone who uses kinetic weapons or prefers kinetic weapons uh, has a bit of a grudge against this thing. And we're going to get to that, like, well, pretty much immediately. And I do have to say that uh, it doesn't look amazing in my fleet colors, but it does look pretty funky in my fleet colors. Them white gun barrels and all that. So to start off with... jeez. Let's just do this, because I'm going to make myself seasick. Uh, I think I'm going to make myself seasick anyway. So the Eerie is a spectacularly annoying craft, not the most dangerous in the world, but uh, if you're not prepared for it, it uh, will be tremendously irritating, as anyone who's watched... I uh, can't remember which number episode it was, but uh, the campaign episode in my Nita playthrough, which I ran into one of these things, I just about was pulling my hair out. So. What makes it annoying? Well, for a start, it's pretty well armored. So, if we just zoom in here, that, and you'll see right on the front, which is arguably one of the less... Well, no, it is pretty damn well armored on the front. So, you've got one, two... Uh, turn the UI back on. Two layers of metal, a layer of armor, then two more layers of metal. This nose right here, as tends to be the case with uh, airships that face things head on, it's very, very well armored. You are going to have serious trouble trying to break through it uh, via the nose. On the sides, it's only slightly less well armored with three layers of metal. It's, yep, still... And it just uh, simmers down to about two layers of metal here, there, and everywhere. And But the real king of it is... Let's just modify this so we can see what on earth we are doing. So we do that, and uh, it goes mental with the armoring a little bit. So one, two, three, four. That's four layers of metal. Only slightly less here. Oh, hello. Just two layers of metal here. No, never mind. Make that three. Two, three. There's heavy armor right here for the ammo. And I think it's rear is... Yep, the rear is pretty well armored. So one, two, three, four layers of metal. So generally, it's... a. Uh, I know, it's uh, built a little bit like, well, if you look at it from above, what kind of shape is that? It's a little bit like a shoe, I guess. So you have the toe of the shoe, very heavily armored, so steel-capped boot. You have the side of the shoe, which is, well, less heavily armored. And then you have the heel of the shoe back here, which is really well armored. This thing is a big slab of metal for the most part. And I never realized that there's like a big air gap right there. So, right underneath it, slightly less well armored, as in slightly. So, pretty well armored. And in particular, what's annoying about it is that uh, the most heavily armored bits are surrounding the th this. There is an entire craft's worth of material in between the bottom of it and these daddy blades, which are the main thing keeping it up in the air. So this thing hardly ever ditches into the ocean, and I just realized I forgot to set my timer. Uh, enjoy the spinning blocks while I do that. There we go. Now I know what time I'm at. So looking at the inner, it's quite a compact thing. So lots of armor. So it's one of those things that is, uh... It's, like, it's built like a very heavily armored egg. You, uh have a lot of trouble getting through the actual armor, but once you're through it, you're okay. The trick is getting there. So, 
What else is interesting about this thing? Well, I should mention as well that uh, it's on rather than combat because it uses an aerial AI. And if I do that, it buggers off into the middle distance. So let's turn this off completely and uh, let's spawn in a Marauder. So I can show you that uh, one of the things that makes it particularly obnoxious, this thing stands out a lot by the standards of the Onyx watch. And one of the reasons for that is that it actually has reasonably decent shielding, or at the very least, shielding placed in a way for maximum irritation. So let's just find one. I know it's around here somewhere. I know it's around here. You don't fool me. Come on. It's fooling me. This happens every time. Every dang time. Seriously? Where are the shields? There are the shields. Okay. So if I do this. So, as per usual, it's not, for the Onyx Watch, it's not amazing shield coverage, but those shields are almost perfectly placed to be maxim nah, maximally, ugh, to be really irritating for the angle at which it engages most ships, which is down here. You see, uh, you see from this angle, it's very, very well covered. Except for that bit right in the belly, which for some reason, it, uh, yeah, because of aim point spoofing, from this angle, it's usually aiming straight through, uh, craft tend to aim straight through shields, which is yet another reason this thing is very irritating. So back up here, thank you. Actually, let's do this instead. Which, I guess that leads, uh, quite well onto the next thing. It, You would have heard quite well that, uh, oh hello, didn't know that. Uh, one of the shields, the shields appear to be attached to these uh, turrets right here. Interesting. But in any case, uh, so it has a pretty decent lamp system, general purpose, usually quite good at dealing with, uh, what do you call it, with crams but also can handle slow APS and a, quite a reasonable missile volley as well. Yet another reason why I particularly hate it. And what else? It's got big cram cannons, a lot of them. So it's got one, two, three, four uh, cram, uh, double-barreled cram turrets around the heel of the shoe. It's got one on top. It's got these three mahusive ones right down here. Well, I say mahusive, but they're actually medium gauge. They just look a lot bigger for some reason. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that all of these crams are just high explosive. Uh, yep, that's high explosive. That's high explosive. That's high explosive. Let's see here. This is high. This is high explosive. This is high explosive. High explosive. And high explosive. And high explosive. High explosive. So it's lots of explodey cracks. And it's also got these uh, little secondary guns on the side here. It's a uh, usual Onyx Watch style anti aircraft stuff, which is uh, just time to use frags. They do the job pretty well means that you can't just swarm this thing with light aircraft because it loves that. It loves to eat them alive. And what else? And possibly last but not least, uh, this the thing that really makes it irritating for anybody using any kind of like kinetic weapon, and basically APS or crams, this thing does this constant bobbing up and down like a cork and it achieves that through a mix of Deadly Blades and PIDs. And it bobs, okay, so it's up at 252, and then it's gonna bob all the way down to, wait for it, 190. So, it goes up and down in a 70 meter tall kind of sine wave. I guess that's what you call it, but yeah. So, it moves in constant curves no matter where it is or what it's doing, so, especially at a distance, a lot of cram shots tend to miss it completely. I'm going to demonstrate that by throwing one of my craft into the meat grinder. So here we go. Right here. 
It's actually interesting that it's classified as a thruster craft, because honestly, I'm not entirely clear on the difference. I'd, I would call it an airship, because it uses Deadly Blades, but uh, I guess not everyone would agree with that. So let's throw my old favorite at it, and I can show you just how dodgy this thing actually is. There we go. And great talents, because I like the color. So especially if you use crams, this is what tends to happen uh, when you use crams with it. So that initial bob, right up there. Well, for a start, stupid lamb system, but that. Exactly that. Shots tend to whistle either straight over it or under it. So if you like to use crams, like I do, like the Eerie is going to annoy you tremendously. Unless you're like me and you like time fuses as well. So even once it gets closer, it doesn't get a lot better. So yep, complete overshoot. Still hitting the thing, but still, it is dodging a lot of shells right now. Even little Sabo smoke guns, it is dodging them, which is incredibly irritating. Right, so that's enough of that. You get the idea. It's a very dodgy craft. So, that begs the question. Uh, this thing is very tough. It's got lambs, and it dodges like a madman, even though it doesn't really move that fast. It only moves about 20 meters per second. So what are its weaknesses? Well, let's uh, load it up again, and we can go through that. And let's just uh, restore my paint scheme quickly, because uh, I feel like doing that. Uh, never mind the tar- okay, there they go. Okay, can you stop just there? So, uh, one thing to note about uh, the lamp system on this thing is that it's kind of general purpose, and I'm guessing that the, the laser experts in the audience are gonna probably point out that it's not an incredibly efficient lamp system, because if you look at it, it is covered with lamps nodes. There's like a few up here, there's a few up there, a few up here and everywhere. They could be spaced out more efficiently, and I don't think it really has any lamps cover on the back don't really see well it does have those but directly behind it it doesn't have any and it doesn't deal with missile swarms like incredibly well as a result so if I get you to do that well for a start you're pointing the wrong way which is uh, less than ideal let's do this I'm going to spawn in another old favorite, which is the Master of the Missile Swarm. And this is something that's probably going to deserve a uh, most want of, of its own at some point. This is the Asphodel. I think that's how you pronounce it. Asphodel, yeah. Or, yeah, As Aspodel? Asphodel. It is a missile craft, and, uh, yeah. Basically... I think this thing's missile barrage is easily strong enough in order to get through the land system of this. Not least of which because I think it also has smoke. Yep. So there is a weakness right there, is that its land system is uh, pretty good, but it's not that good. A sufficiently big missile barrage. Actually, let's not do that. Let's do... What's something that's incredibly stupid missile barrage? There. Black current. So yeah, if you throw this many missiles at it, it is going to die. One way or another. So really, it, the missile, the lamp system on this thing is more optimized kind of for smaller missile swarms. Or failing that, just big shells coming at it. Something that can has good armor-like penetration value. 
well, anti-armor value, I should say. Oh, so moving. We're gonna move off camera. Right, so that's one thing. It's lambs isn't really optimized for missile swarms, and any form of uh, APS that is pretty close and pretty fast can catch it. And I think what's something with very fast APS? Ah, I know. Uh, this. It's our old favorite again. So about here, we'll spawn in our Eerie. Way over here, come on. Come on, Onyx Watch. And also, yeah, we'll spawn it in Great Talon's colors, simply because why not? Why not? I like fun. Don't you like fun? I love fun. Dun -dun 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 Where are you? Do I remember my letters? No, I don't, apparently. There we go. And away you go, lad, and uh, good luck with this, because uh, the trebuchet, I believe, has shells that are fast enough to catch the Yuri. Yeah, look at... Yep. And the lambs doesn't deal that well with very fast shells because the trebuchet doesn't really need to lead its shots that much so yeah boom there's a hit another hit so usual story if you spam fast APS shells at this you are going to kill it dead and I should mention as well like well the trebuchet is actually a really good example of how to counter the Eerie. Anything with a decent uh, anti crams lamb system is gonna do pretty well against uh, the Eerie because its main armament, apart from the little frag guns, is crams. Although if the Eerie wins, I'm actually gonna be pretty amazed. How's the health looking? Uh, actually even. Wow. So I guess the lesson is here, trebuchet guns, better lamb system and better shielding. See, it's annoying how, like, everyone else... Everyone else's cram guns seem to do much better at getting through lambs than mine do. Probably something I'm doing wrong. But in any case, you get the drill. Who's winning? Okay, never mind. The Eerie is starting to eat it now. And, uh, for all of those... Those of you in the audience who have, uh, had to suffer through what this bloody thing can do. Okay, that looked very painful. Trebuchet managed to land a cram on there. Very ouch. Very much ouch. I can't even see what's happening through the smoke. Boom. Boom. Boom, boom. Boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom. Sorry, I got lost in the moment there. So you get the idea there. Fast APS shells we will catch it, we will kill it, which is a lot like most things actually, and uh, possibly one of the biggest weakness of the Eerie. Well, for a start, if you do like to use, uh, sorry, a bit of a tangent before I go off into what I was just about to say, but uh, if you like to use timed shells for either big slow APA shells or crams, then you're going to have a slightly easier time against the Eerie because it means that you can still blow bits off it, even if a shell would otherwise miss. And I should mention, as usual, that particle cannons, as usual, will rip it straight out of the air. But I'm on the verge of not even mentioning particle cannons in these videos because, quite frankly, you set them up right, they're good against everything. And I mean literally everything. So, not really worth spending much time on that or even demonstrating it. We know that pack's overpowered. But, the important thing about the Eerie is that it has, well, as you might expect for a craft that uh, has a, uh, that is, well, it's still only a craft of the second, fa of the technical second faction in the game. And so it doesn't have missile, well, missile defense, it doesn't have laser defense. And I'm going to show that off now by uh, shamelessly showing off. Uh, a craft I built quite recently. So we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. I have a brand new hovercraft folder, I'm so proud. 
So this is the Wadjet, and it is the first laser craft I've ever built that I'm actually somewhat happy with, and the Erie has no laser defense at all. It has no smoke, it has no laser defense, and because uh, it relies on being bouncy in midair to evade a lot of stuff, it's not good against hitscan weapons like the aforementioned particle cannons, and the, well, lasers. So, let's show you how that works. And the Wadjet, I think, I've tried my best, but honestly, it's ugly even by my standards, really. I think as somebody, I can't remember, I think it was Sabertooth Proton, uh, said about the Wadjet, it looks kind of like two robots standing in a canoe. And as you can see, you get a good laser going, something that does at least uh, 2,100 damage per pulse. With about 81 armor piercing, you just disintegrate anything made of metal. And the LAM system on the Wadjet uh, doesn't hurt either, because it is, well, it's actually pretty decent against cramps. Not amazing, though. I actually still need to tweak the Wadjet a little bit. It tends to lose bits of itself, and it's deliberately slow, so... There you see, armor, no defense, got no smoke, can't bounce away. Actually, the Wadjet is eating it quite badly at the moment, it's quite irritating. Yeah, I need to fix this. I need to fix this very badly, actually. Usually does a lot better than that. But for some reason, she just kind of steers badly. Given sufficient time, Eerie is probably going to die. Well, you can see just the confetti trail. Like, lasers really are one of the, well, one of the bigger balance issues in the game, honestly, because against anything that doesn't have decent laser defense, it is pretty much instant death. But against anything with decent laser defense, they're almost useless. So, I don't know. That doesn't seem like good game balance to me. Although you could argue this is precisely what lasers are good for. They're dealing with anything that, well, you can't really touch otherwise. I'm sorry, I'm worried about my baby. I am worried about the Wadjet. She's taking way more damage than usual. Still fighting, though. Oh, that's a cute baby cram trying to fire away. So if nothing else, use lasers. Oh my god, we've almost eaten its face off. I think back whoa, yeah, this is yeah. Not the strongest lasers in the world either that's on the Wadjet right now, I should mention. But yeah, I'm starting to... I have officially gone over to the dark side a little bit. Why is one of those lasers not firing? That's very irritating. So yeah, this is why people like lasers. You can't dodge them. Well, you can, kind of. Oh, Jesus, look at that. We have almost cut its nose off. Or t cut the toe off, I guess. So if you want to kill an Eerie... Lasers are definitely, possibly, the best way to go. But just while we're here, just let's, uh, let's quickly sum up, like, what works, what doesn't. Virtually anything works against the Eerie, provided you spam it enough. Even cram cannons can uh, actually kill it, if you just uh, time the volleys right. But what works really well is lasers, particle cannons, fast APS shells, and really, really big missile swarms. And what doesn't work so well is, well, anything that isn't that. Uh, so slow APS, crams, and insufficient missile swarm. So, that's basically it. I think this is one of the shorter, most wanted I've ever done, really. So, let's show off, let's show off the Wadjet. Made of wood, by the way. Also not ideal against uh, the Onyx Watch, but that's because I made her to fight a Lightning Hoods craft instead. Uh, she's so delightfully ugly, I really need to fix that. Anyway, 
Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time in From the Depths. Most Wanted. Uh, let's, uh... Can I even? Wait, no. Let's end this with a bang. I want to see what happens if I do this. Well, what happens is it dies, so, uh, not sure what I was expecting, but, uh, any case, thank you all, and, uh, farewell!